We hit them on the Google Assist always. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Uh, it's a songs. Uh, well, uh, it's a song that I did with my Tongo family. This one is called Katutura. Uh, well, good evening. It's a Thursday. We we in the happy mood. We oh, we ready uh, for Friday. But we must always remember that we need to make sure that we t- need to take care of ourselves. And uh, tonight, uh, welcome to Lockdown Nights with Josie Charles. And we're just having a lock uh, a, a lock chat right here with uh, Clevet. Uh, Mwandingi. He's, of course, uh, the president of uh, Afrian. We'll get to find out a bit more about uh, Afrian. But also, um, we're talking about uh, the male child. Uh, what The male child, what do we do with that male child, that boy child? What are, what are we doing with the boy child and what's really society doing? And what are the impacts of neglecting the male child or the boy child? Uh, we'll talk about that right here on Lockdown Nights with Jesse Jones. Quick one. Um... The numbers are, are growing. Um, we've got about 8.5 million, um, 16,324 um, uh, in terms of infection rate, uh, 453,578, 4.4 million, 88,497, 974 actually. Um, that is the recovered cases. And then, of course, we're looking at the active cases. Uh, they're sitting at about 3.5 million. And all, also, is only 2% of those that are serious and critical. It's been like that for some time. And it sort of continues that way. Um, 3.5 million are in the mild, or just over 3.5 million are in the mild condition. And then, of course, uh, we've got a 91% recovery rate um, and uh, only a 9% death rate so far. In terms of the, co- the collected data, um, the data could uh, vary and it picks up and it goes up now here and there. The numbers that we are really looking at and we're waiting for is, of course, those country by country. America still sits on top and uh, there's so much that has been happening and people are talking about the um, the Russian um, billionaire that uh, had his fly uh, or his plane flow, f- flown into the country or land in the country and then he flew out again, read the story, got to understand what the story is all about. Perhaps maybe we could look at it and say, you know, uh, justifiable, noting that he had to leave. Uh, he's got his own plane. Uh, you would uh, ultimately expect that plane to land in the country. But there's different versions to that. Uh, we don't want to get in there. There is, of course, the issue around the um, the Namibian or South Af- with South African citizenship that has been arrested and... Um, uh, well, we've received, um, you know, comp- or so, sort of the rumors around the fact that there's about, um, uh, you know, uh, 18 police officers that are currently quarantined and are going through tests uh, so that, um, so that um, you know, they could determine whether, because, he, of course, he, he, he was or he is infected with uh, COVID-19 and the police sort of didn't take precaution around that. And that's really what what currently is the issue um, that that's taking center stage right here in in Namibia. The biggest one, of of course, they're talking about the seven million. That's the seven million they're talking about. We don't know much about what really is happening around the seven million. But most interesting, of course, is the um, the former acting CEO of uh, Fishco, um, um, uh, Paulus Ngarangi, who who has issued a statement to indicate that, look, in, in, in any case, you know, he assisted, um, he, he went out there to the border to assist someone, but he took precaution throughout the same, or the whole process, and he is healthy, and in not at all, um, um, at the moment, he is um, saying that he is willing to, um, you know, cooperate with the authorities, 
um, about his situation on COVID, um, whether he has tested positive or whether he's he's uh, exposed or not. There is that issue about exposure that uh, is being spoken about. And um, exposure, of course, being the biggest, um, sort of the biggest thing right now with uh, some of uh, the, um, you know, just the, the, the officers that have been exposed um, right um, at Independence on 77. Uh, it's, it's a sort of a big issue. It's a big story, but we wait to see how it plays out. But we look at Namibia, of course, Namibia's cases have increased. Um, there's a, some sort of increase, um, increment in the number of cases in Namibia. And Namibia now see, is sitting uh, relatively high with about 30 um, 39 cases. Uh, three new cases. Uh, there's a student from the UK uh, that is um, tested positive. I think she's about 22. There is, of course, uh, the um, you know the the one in 55 year old in uh, Swakopmund, and then of course Walfish Bay. Uh, there's another exposure there, or oh, there's another positive case there. 20 active cases, and only 19 of those are, re are sort of recovered cases, and um, we, we we are looking at how things are going to play out. Walfish Bay, heavily exposed. I think we spoke about that. Walfish Bay is heavily exposed due to the fact that there was a huge movement of an, um, a positive or a person that tested positive that moved up and down. So that is the situation that we're finding ourselves in as a country that talks about whether we could go back uh, to stage one as a whole country. Is commerce going to go to stage one? We don't know yet. We, we, we're still yet to find out whether commerce is going to move uh, to stage one, back to stage one or not. But there's quite a lot of speculation. We will keep you up to date with what's happening and we'll just make sure that uh, we uh, relay that information. So Namibia, is sitting on 39, uh, 39 cases, and um, and, and this, that's the situation that we are sitting with right at the moment. Uh, let's uh, have a conversation around the male child, the boy child. And uh, in uh, the house with us is, of course, the president of Afrian, uh, Clevert uh, Mandingi. Uh, good evening to you, my brother. Good evening, Jesse. Just, uh, How are you? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm very fine. Okay. Before we get started about this boy child and, and, and the impacts of neglecting the boy child, I, I want to find out, for those that don't know, what is Afrian? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, yeah. I'm very uh, pleased to be here uh -huh. uh, today um, and also to be given the opportunity uh, to tell everybody what AFRIAN is all about. Mm -hmm. um, AFRIAN itself stands for African Youth and Adolescent Network mm -hmm. uh, on Population and Development. Mm. Um, AFRIAN is the biggest um, youth-led organization in Africa. Mm. So it is um, in more than... Uh, 25 countries as we speak right now in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, it's in all Southern African countries, uh, Southern mm -hmm. Eastern African countries. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, Na Namibia is represented in all um, 14 regions, but we have uh, um, uh, 11 regions that are really active uh, structures. Mm -hmm. um, AFRIAN is the youth network that's registered to the AU, as I've mentioned earlier, that advocates for the rights of all young people, the rights mm. of all young people mm. when it comes to access to services, whether it's economic service, whether it's uh, health services, whether it's uh, um, um, information services, whether it's um, spaces in terms of young people being represented uh, at the levels where decisions are made, policies mm. are put together, strategic frameworks are drafted. AFRIAN is the youth network that advocates. And it has, it's a network. It's not an organization. So it's a network because it has organizations that are affiliated with it, that mm -hmm. are youth-led as well. So mm -hmm. the youth network or youth organizations are then now affiliated, which means AFRIAN coordinates those youth networks. And AFRIAN mm -hmm. is the only network that has got the, um, actually access to be part of these high platforms that the G, uh, UN the General Assembly, African Union, SADC itself, all those um, in terms of parliament as well. So all those are high level um, tables. That's where AFRIAN advocates for young people. Okay. The, 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 there's a question around, of, of course, the, the question that arises 
is from um, June 16, uh, just um, uh, a day or, um, you know, two days ago. Yeah. We celebrated June 16, Youth Day in South Africa, the day of an African child yeah. uh, on the African continent. Um, I, w I want to find out what, what, what has been some of the achievements that you've uh, achieved over the period as Afrian that you could sort of single out and say, you know, this is what we have done as a network yeah. to ensure that, you know, young people are here and there. Um, um, talking about the, the June 16 African Child Day, uh, that actually is a very big day for African because uh, most of um, the the activities, or let me rather say the, the strategic uh, framework for African or strategic plan is um, literally uh, deliberated from that, is integrated from that uh, day whereby young people has taken the stand and they had enough and they said, look, we want to be involved. We are tired of being oppressed. We are tired of, of living in the same situation. Mm. Um, and coming back to the question of uh, what have we done, what has Afrian done to, 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 to sort of speak to that day and to say this is what you have done that sort of coincides with the, uh, the day of June 16th. Um, ever since the establishment of Afrian, and that is, uh, Afrian was established uh, in year 2000, uh, 2002. Mm -hmm. uh, that's on the um, um, regional level, which is Africa. In Namibia, it was established in 2012. So it's uh, about eight years now in Namibia. Mm. Um, and um, what I have done so far, especially in all African countries, uh, Eastern and Southern Africa, we have advocated for the fair and equal and equitable access to health rights mm -hmm. for all young people. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about young people and access to services, I'm talking about whether it's a black young person, whether it's a young, a white young person, whether it's a, a, a young person from um, mm. a, a minority population. We are talking yeah. about LGBTQI. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about those yeah, young people that we have advocated for them to be treated fairly, for them to be given the services, mm. for them to be allowed to conform to whatever they want to, to conform to, mm. for them to, 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 to be allowed to have a space, space to air their voices when it comes to SRHR services. SRHR is sexual reproductive health. health. For the girl child to say, it is my right to choose whether I want to be sexually active at, at the age of 12 whether I want to be taught how to use a condom at the age of 13. So we have advocated for that, and that has been one of um, the most uh, highest successes that we have achieved ever since the establishment of, uh, of Africa. And for the boy child to say that I have the right to conform to whatever I want to conform. I have the right to be in, in a relationship with whoever I want to be in a relationship. So I have the right as a boy child to, to, to be an entrepreneur and to compete with companies and also be given uh, an opportunity to, t to render my services. So we advocated for that. Okay. You've advo advocated for all of this. Um, <clears throat> I want us to talk about the boy child. Yeah. And, and that's really what we're talking about tonight. Yeah. Um, we wanted to get a background on Afri and so that I, I think our viewers and, and listeners can, can have a, a better understanding mm -hmm. of what Afrian does. Um, but before we get to the boy child, who are some of your, the notable um, figures that are, are emanate from Afrian? Well, um at the moment, right now, and I'm really uh, pleased that you asked that question. Um, the current um, uh, deputy minister of um, uh, uh, MICT, mm. uh, Honorable uh, Emma Teofelis, uh, currently also serves f as uh, uh, the head of finance in the African cabinet. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so she's part of the African executive committee, mm -hmm. and uh, she's one of the, 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 the people that we can say it's a, it has been a success. The African mm. has succeeded. And um, African Namibia, actually, to say, is mm -hmm. the first uh, uh, chapter to have a young person in parliament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... That's a, that's a, 
uh, it's a an achievement. achievement. Congratulations and, on that. Yeah. Now, now let's talk about the boy child. I want us to talk about the boy child. We had a very interesting conversation around the boy child, and there seems to be a neglect that's happening with the boy child. Um, what is this neglect that is happening with the boy child? Because the boy child has been taken care of. One would say the, the boy child has been taken care of. They, they, they are able to play soccer. They are able to, uh, to um, play rugby. They are able to, uh, to sing. They are able to perform. Everything it sort of has been sorted out for them. Uh, to be honest, uh, Josie, it's, um, the boy child has, has been taken care of, partially been taken care of. Mm. I would say myself in my uh, in my own personal capacity as the president of Afria, mm. um, and I would really say that uh, in the past, I can say in the past twenty five years, it, the issues has been around the adolescent girl, and I know it is because of um, women being seen as um, a vulnerable community in the, in society, women being seen as as, as they are. Uh, they have less power to protect themselves and issues that are surrounding women in terms of uh, even if you, if you look at the sustainable development goals today they're mm. talking about zero maternal death obviously yes we need to protect our women they're talking about zero gender-based violence because mm. for 25 years women have been seen as as the victims to, gen uh, to gender-based violence and when we say the boy has been taken care of the boy has been taken care of in terms of sports in terms of maybe employment in, in, in certain cases, because that has also fallen out of now, the, the race, in terms of other activities. But when we come to um, activities in terms of rights and educating the boy child mm. on who he has to be in society, mm. those needs have not been met. Yes, yes. Why have those needs not been met? What, what, what transpired today? Is, is it a, a thing of tilting the, 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 or flipping the coin um, and, and, and simply saying that in, 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 in taking care of the, the girl child, there's the sort of some suppression happening with the boy child? Yeah, that, that, that I would definitely agree with that. And, and, and I'll say, like, uh, uh, like I, I, I said before, um, it, it's ever since when we, we, we started talking about uh, empowerment of women, uh, advocating for the 50-50, and uh, bringing the women into the spaces. And bringing the women into the spaces has to come with um, protecting the women, has to come with uh, making sure that the, the women's rights have been respected, have to make sure that also comes with uh, making sure that the woman has got full access to whatever man had access to. And because of that, it is sort of, uh, I don't even want to say that suppress is the right word to use because I mm. think it's a very soft word to, 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 and I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm trying to, 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 to be biased and say that uh, men have been left out, but suppress, I, I feel like it's a very soft word to use uh, uh, around this term. I can say maybe the boy child has been pushed aside because if you look at, the investment that has been put into the empowering of women. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm very happy that women are empowered. I'm very happy that women have, have been brought to the table mm -hmm. and to understand what's on the table, what mm -hmm. men has been dealing with. Uh, women has, has, are put in positions now. We are talking about the zebra, uh, zebra system in, in parliament, mm -hmm. that women are also in, in, uh, in spaces where decisions are made and policies are crafted. Uh, but... Uh, th with that being done, the boy child has been pushed aside mm. because so much investment has been put into empowering women. Activities and programs went towards women. And um, to name a few, we are talking about issues like gender-based violence, mm. for example. Well, 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 but women would then say, but for hundreds and thousands of years, men have been put at the forefront. Uh, well, 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 what head could it make? What head could it do? What harm could it do? To, um, to, to women just being uh, put at the forefront for, for a bit. You know, when it comes to cultural norms, and these are not African uh, cultural norms, these are worldwide mm. norms. Mm. Um, and, and, and even though we might be ha having listeners today that uh, they say that, no, I, I'm not Christian, but um, the Bible is one of the most uh, read book in the world. 
and 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 Christianity has sort of like covered the whole world. And if you look even to from biblical religious uh, uh, platforms to cultural platforms, mm. man has always been the head, mm. and because of that, man has, has been seen that uh, they have an advantage over women, and and and. And because of that, women felt like they were suppressed, that they were not recognized in societies. Mm. I mean, we still have today, uh, I mentioned earlier about gender-based violence, where we have today some, some, some cultures that believe that a man is justified to, to beat his woman, uh, f to physically uh, mm. abuse his woman for a valid reason. Mm. And if I bring it to the Namibian statistics, mm. you will see that um, 98 93 percent, not 98. 93 percent of men believe that is right. He justified for a man to beat his woman, mm. and 89 percent of women. You see, there's no difference. It's about four percent different. 89 percent of women believe that it's okay for a man to beat the woman if she has done wrong, even if you go in the community today. And because of these beliefs, they have sidelined. These beliefs have caused a sideline of men being pushed aside and investment being put into women because the woman has been seen less of power to protect themselves. Mm. But what we haven't, we haven't looked at is that um, the, the powder that lights the, the, the matchstick, mm. the matchstick I'm referring to the men, that mm. powder is a woman. Mm. In other words, in many cases, Women are not also only the are not only the initiator because if we we talk about uh, gender based violence they are not only the initiator sometimes they can also be the perpetrator when it comes to gender based violence mm. and um, uh, today we have a lot of men that are actually suffering there's a study that says that uh, about twenty uh, twenty five percent twenty five point nine percent of men are are perpetrators of, of gender-based violence without knowing. Mm. Because the investment in the woman, and I was talking to somebody who actually said, the investment in the woman has set a trap for men. Okay. Because men, today, they are perpetrators of gender-based violence. And mm. if you understand the meaning of gender-based violence, gender-based violence is any violent act with an or threat, any violent act or threat mm. that sort of like um, uh, is perpetrated or initiated by unequal power. And if you look at the acts that are under gender-based gender violence, we even have got issues of concern, for example. Mm. Uh, that uh, men so, are not educated okay. about. Let, 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 we'll, we'll get to the issue of concern, and, and I, I want us to get there. Um, but but let, let's highlight this issue and the impact on, on gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. w w why should you take care of uh, uh, the boy child when it comes to gender-based violence or sexual assault? Why should, you, why should it matter to take care of, of the boy child? Because at the moment, as we speak right now, uh, a lot of men, and a lot of men can include you and I here, mm. Josie Jones, mm. are in the dark. They're in, in trouble. They're in the dark. They're in, a, in this dark room. And this dark room is full of things. And they don't know which one of those items in that dark room they should touch. If they touch, it's wrong for them to touch it or not. That's how men have been left out in terms of gender-based violence. So uh, because of lack of, 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 of activities, lack of programs that are, uh, have been put in place to educate the men, because it has all been about educating the woman on if this and this happen, if ABC happen, that is gender-based violence. If ABC happen, that is sexual violence. If that and that happen, that is sexual abuse. If that and that's your privacy or your, 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 your confidentiality has been breached, if that and that happen, your it's out of your consent, you must report it. But it has never come to a man to say, if that and that happen, you are also a victim of gender-based violence. If that and that happen, you are also uh, in, subjected to be uh, you know, a victim of gender-based violence or to be a perpetrator because of this, that could set you as a trap. Mm. So a man today is not educated because of that. 
And that's why I see that it's, it's, it's very important because if you do not educate the men now, we are not going to get rid of the root cause. And the root cause is you, you have to, to solve the problem, you have to go to the root cause. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the root cause at the moment today is, is, is not the man. It is because the man is uninformed. This is like you are, are telling me, you are arresting me, telling me that no, uh, you have jumped a four-way stop when I have never been educated about a four-way stop. Mm. I don't know that that's a four-way stop. Mm. But then I cross it and then you um, arrest me. But you have never educated me about this. So we need to deal with the root cause to say, what is the problem for, for the man to be uh, the perpetrator or to, for the men to to stop being the perpetrator, the boy, mm. ch and when we're talking about the men, we're talking about the boy child to be to protect. How do we protect the boy child? Mm. Is when we teach the boy child the same teaching that we have given to the girl child, mm. for the mm. boy child to be away. Because okay. you must understand, these are these are two different. Uh, um, I almost said uh, use the word species. We, 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 we are also going to take some calls because quite interesting. We're getting some comments that are coming in. Yeah. Um, uh, if you would love to give us a call, give us a call on 0812850859, 0812850859. The um, there's a message here that comes in that says I'm concerned about the emphasis on sexual rights. Uh, that are being advocated by the gentleman. Uh, age 12 is too young to make decisions on sexual engagement. Apart from rights, what values are they promoting? And uh, what about education, entrepreneurship, uh, skills and, and develop, development, spiritual as well as uh, faith values? Uh, that is a, a message coming in and questions that are popping up. We, we're going to have this, this that issue, yeah. advocating for sexual rights. Um, I think it's a very good question. Um, <laughs> It's a very, very good question. That twelve um, is too young. Uh, that um, and, and um, that's what they are saying. Yeah, yeah. it's um, it's it's a uh, it, it's very sad that we have to advocate for sexual rights when it comes to the age of twelve. But Josie, um, and and uh, thank you very much for the question. Um, the the the, the one who sent the question. Um, we cannot move away from reality. Mm. Um, I'm very happy to say today that Namibia was one of the first Southern African countries to drop from, when you talk about advocacy around sexual rights of adolescents, um, from the age of 14 to 10. Mm. Because uh, Namibia is one of the first countries to, to say, to actually realize that this is reality. We have girls at the age of 13, 12, that are teen mothers. And uh, I don't want to name regions mm. that I have been, that I have witnessed this myself, that I'm, I'm married off to mm. older men because of climate change, because of um, lack of economic uh, strengthening, because of poverty, which are the drivers of, 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 of this type of uh, um, uh, issues or this type of problems that happen around young girls. Mm. And, and this is where we have realized and, and to say, look, uh, we, we need to start speaking for the girl child because of that age of, of 11, 10, and 12 because we have girl or adolescent girls who came out and say, you cannot tell, tell me or I want my mother and my father to know that I know what happens in the bedroom when my mom and my father are in the bedroom. I know what they are doing behind those doors. I know what sex is. I know what a condom is. So, and, and I'm very, very happy uh, from Africa. And this is why we speak. We speak about these terms very openly. Um, so, so, so you are saying that a twelve-year-old pretty much knows what sex is. A twelve-year-old knows what transactional sex is. Okay. So she also knows she's she's likely to be having sex as well. Yes. And, 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 and the 12 year old would probably would want to have a condom, but you'll probably not be able to have a condom sold to them. Exactly. That's why I said, Josie, a 12 year old understand the term transactional sex. Mm. Now, the term transactional sex is when you have sex in exchange of money. So I know I come from a vulnerable family, uh, a not able family, and I want to go to school. Whoa. You, you <laughs> Whoa. Okay. You. <laughs> it's shocking. 
a 12 year old a 12 year old okay understands that hey look give me something yeah, yeah, yeah. Y- you know we can have this sex yeah 12 year old will tell you that listen i've got my boyfriend that picks me up after school and, and, and these are things that we are trying to turn a blind eye to but it's happening it's happening we if 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 you have a 12 year old that's telling you that's a teen mother she's she's telling you that between seven and one o'clock i'm a learner at school not a student we're talking about a learner grade seven mm. and or grade six but after 1 30 i'm a mother because i'm taking care of my daughter or my son and i have to go sell fat cakes because i need to help my the father of my daughter to support our child and they will tell you like if if you want to 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 change my lifestyle you need to be able to provide for me but my man was providing for me and, and these are issues that we we can't run away from these are issues that i i know that were attentively t- tabled in parliament as well at, at one point and 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 there was sort of a tower was thrown, thrown a, around them that we can't talk about these issues right now but in the sexual reproductive health right world, the SRH world, with all the partners, and I'm talking about government agencies, the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Youth, we are dealing with these issues openly. We are talking about them openly because we know they're happening. We know the victims of, this, of these issues. We have identified them. And this is how... Well, but w- wouldn't you see tougher laws probably prohibiting these things from happening? You, you know, Josie, um, as, as much as we want to talk about the law, um, and, and the law is a very good thing, and the law stands, but the law um, also acts in a very um, narrow space um, also because the law is only um, strong or is only, um, how must I say, useful providing it's given the platform. Mm. So if, if, if this is... It, is, is seen as a, a, a norm in the community, for example, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, vulnerable com- communities and marginalized communities in, in our country. If it's seen as a norm, if, if you have parents giving off their 12-year-old uh, because they know that we are unable to take care of her, we rather allow her to go with uh, John or, or, or Peter who can take care of her, mm. uh, and it's seen as a norm. How does the law then come in and, and say, look, what you are doing is literally, you're literally, uh, for instance, you're literally raping this child because she's underage and, and this is wrong. But then this girl does not press charges because if she would tell you, if you're going to take me away from this life, you need to take, to take care of me. I've seen this in, in, in a movie. I've, I just forgot the movie. That um, uh, the uh, Philip uh, Philippite is it? Um, what is the um, Becha um, um did a movie around this young girl that was in school and she was married off to this other guy. Yeah. And she was a virgin and he didn't want to. Um, she didn't want to have sex with him. And at one point in time, he raped her. And then she fell pregnant. She gave birth. And, and it's sort of a story where he tells that all her friends, as almost a, uh, quite three or four of them, were, were actually uh, married off and they were having kids and they were leaving school and they disappeared from school and they didn't have an understanding around this. And, and it seems like that based on what the statistics were indicating, they, there's high numbers of these things. I think they were talking roughly about 7,000, over 7,000 cases in Namibia that they have picked up of young girls and uh, underage girls yeah. being married off. And we would talk, they would talk, I mean, this is between the ages of 12, 12 and I think 16. So ultimately, I hear what you're saying. What, what are the, you know, the educational... <coughs> Um, you know, programs that you guys have with Afri, and I, I know there's questions that came up. We'll continue with the boy child, but what are the <clears throat> the 
educational programs, especially directed towards these issues that you have, mm. that, you know, you have issues of, um, you know, young girls being married off. I don't know whether that's happening with the boy child as well, mm -hmm. whether the boy child, you're finding him ha having aunties and other, uh, you know, uh, older women in the community having sex with younger boys. I don't know. But what are the educational programs that are, are you, you guys are advocating for at the moment? Well, uh, with the boy child, it's not different as well, but we come to that later on. Um, and um, this is where Afrian comes in when, um, when we talk about uh, educating. Afrian deals with informal education. We, what we do as Afrian, we call it informal education because it's education after school. It's not education within the school spaces. Mm. But in partnership with uh, the Ministry of Education, um, because Afrian is also, uh, they, we also, we are also part of the National Strategic, um, not Strategic, National School Health Task Force, um, uh, which is not, then now spearheaded by the Ministry of Education and the, the Directors of Education. So in the mm. schools, we have um, a, a curriculum called um, CSC, Comprehensive Sexuality Education. And that is in the schools at the moment. And, and that will just show you the level of seriousness that the government has taken this and actually to understand that this is real. Mm. And the Columbia Sexuality Education informs. And I know there's a lot of people that misunderstand that uh, uh, this curriculum teaches young people about sex. No. This curriculum teaches young people about their rights. Mm. There's, when it comes to uh, sexual health, Mm -hmm. That's why we say it's a comprehensive sexuality education. It's not sexual, it's sexuality. So there's a, it's a thin line between the word sexuality and, uh, sexu uh, and sexual. So sexual is when you are teaching about sex. Mm. Sexuality is when you are informing the rights that you, it's your right as a young person to do this. It's your right to say no. It's your right if somebody is putting their hand on your thigh and you don't feel comfortable for you to say that you don't feel comfortable and to tell that person how, how you feel about it. So that's what's happening in the school. And informal education with Afrian, we are running a lot of um, activities uh, in partnership with the United uh, UN agencies as well, uh, specifically to name uh, the UNFP, United Nations Population Fund. So we are running activities out that um, at the moment right now, Afrian is spearheading the condomized campaign that uh, informs, educates um, on condom, um, uh, uh, usage and p promotes uh, the distribution of sex, uh, condoms and obviously also to remove or to fight that stigma around young people being afraid to touch a condom and young people thinking that it's wrong for me to touch a condom because yeah and then the uh, alien sorry to catch you and, and mm -hmm. the, uh, one campaign is what we call it the EUP which is alien intended pregnancy that's also in partnership with Ministry of Education and other UN agencies as well so those are the informal education um, um, campaigns and activities or programs that we are running for for young people <coughs> what what is the statistics around the boy child making use of a, a condom Noting that you are indicating that the boy child is sexually active, yeah. Um, what what is the, the 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 usage of condom? The percentage of usage of condom right now? Have you guys picked up some numbers and some figures around it? And is the boy child really using a condom? And if not, what what's happening there? You you know you'll be actually be surprised and, and and probably be put a smile on your face if I tell you that uh, when it comes to fighting stigma and overcoming stigma and that discrimination, the boy child is the first one to say actually you know what I I am ready to to pick up a condom and carry it around and not feel stigmatized feel uh, uh, you know uh, decriminalized or criticized in the community so or discriminated in the community so. In terms of the percentage in, uh, on who is more comfortable to hold the condom, who's more comfortable to say, I want to use a condom, the boy child, actually, they, mm. they, are, large, they are huge in numbers in terms of uh, the, the, the access to condoms. And they advocate, they are more open to advocate for the, the use of condoms. Okay. You, you concern. Um, <clears throat> is the boy child, they, there was a point in time, there was this Me Too movement, and there was a, uh, numbers that were circulating and names that were circulating and it seemed like there was a lot of young young boys 
especially high school boys that were implicated and names that were mentioned. Yeah. Is the boy child well aware of this thing called consent? And that's what I'm talking about. Uh, and we are only talking about numbers of young men that came out. Mm. We, we are not mentioning numbers of older men who have not come out or who have, been, who have not been pointed out. Who have not been pointed out. Yeah, because maybe of fear or maybe of, 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 of trying to uh, jeopardize or um, tarnish that older person's name in the family or in the community or maybe it's a person that carries a status. It could be a police officer, it could be a minister. You know, I'm just saying, throwing words around. Those are numbers that haven't, haven't come out because their boy child has not been educated when it comes to concern. And if you understand the depth of concern, concern is a very sensitive thing that even the first time when I understood concern, I was literally like, oh my gosh, I have been, I, I can actually fall in the number of, 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 of um, perpetrators of sexual violence because I have done things I think I have done things, I might have done things that I was not consciously aware of. You uh, thought it was okay? That I thought it was okay. And, and I didn't know that that is concern. It's an issue of concern. And it, like when I say it's a very sensitive concern, it's, I mean, they say that egg is the, the softest thing that, you know, if you force you break, I think concern is softer than the egg because there's a really, really thin line between concern concerning to something and not concerning to something, especially when it comes to um, intimate partner relationship. A lot, of, a lot of men are perpetrators in intimate partner relationship. What, what, what are those examples? You speak about this intimate partner relationship. I mean the relationship with my girlfriend. I, I want to understand because I think it's an it's a a lot of men want to understand. Yeah. When do I break the barriers? When 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 is there's no consensual or or agreement between me and my partner on this? Because you're speaking about intimate partner relationship. When does the man? What needs should the man know? You know, to to study from a baseline, it, there are people who are in relationships today and put probably listen to us today, couples that are listening to us right now, mm. that um, in a relationship and uh, literally this man or this guy thinks that because he's dating this lady, he has the right to have sex with her whenever he wants to have sex with her. Or this lady, she's dating this guy and she said that I have the right to have sex with my boyfriend whenever I want to have sex. That's already breaching the issue of concern. Mm. Be, or I have the right to remove her t-shirt because she's my girlfriend. So if we go to bed and 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 she's dressed, I have the right to remove her clothes or her, his clothes because we are even in in, in, a, in a situation where you are married, and that's where concern comes in because you don't have the right. Whereby if a guy thinks that no, I met this girl, I picked her up, we went, we go to my place, it means that we are going to get down. You're mm. going to have sex. Mm. You're already bridging concern. Because it doesn't mean that if she goes to your place or he comes to your place, you're supposed to have sex. It doesn't mean that you have rights to have sex with them. It doesn't mean that you have re the right even to... But then, now, but, but then why, why is she coming? I thought she's coming for She's that. coming because she wants to be with you. Not because she wants to have sex with you. And this is where you have to ask for her concern. Okay. And, and concern, it, it, it's so sad that um, I think I was in a meeting two weeks ago that somebody mentioned that we have a lot of African men that are in, arrested today that are in European countries or in the States that are arrested today even just by looking at a woman. Because in, in those countries, you look at the woman from head to toe, you're already undressing her. That's a felony. You're committing a crime. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> okay. That's, so, so, that's so, how sensitive you could... So, 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 I, I want to understand, and, and, and I'm sorry, I, I would love to understand. So, I'm prohibited from looking at someone. You are prohibited from looking at someone but, in but, an uncomfortable way. 
in an uncomfortable in way. In an uncomfortable way. So if you are staring at me as a woman and I feel like you are undressing me with your eyes, you but are who looking who at makes that determination, you are looking though? at my behind. No, oh, clever. Who makes that de- determination though? If I feel uncomfortable, I'm the subject. Keep in mind, as the lady, she is the subject. If she says that you are looking at me and I feel like you are undressing me, uh. you are committing a crime. You, you, the way you stare at me makes me feel uncomfortable. That you, that you already, that's already an act. Mm. It's mm. already an act. Mm. Or it's a threat of act already. And, and like, like I said, when you're talking about consent, it, it's so bad that... Con- not bad. I mean, consent is unsensitive. It's not bad. I love consent because when I came to learn about it, I, I enjoy it today. That you can be with your lady in the bed and she's naked. You are naked. But that doesn't mean that you should have sexual intercourse. You need her consent. Okay, so how many men are aware of this? How many young men are aware of this? How many older men are aware of this thing? I tell you, there's a lot of young men that don't know this. There's a lot of young ladies also that don't know this. Um, Mm. But the danger is when um, young ladies... Uh, like when you're talking about the the Me Too issue that came out last mm. uh, 2019, mm. and 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 a lot of men were were really really in trouble. A lot of young men were in trouble because they have um, initiated or uh, have been involved in activities that unconsciously they were not aware that they were committing a crime. Uh, girls who say that I I I I would have sexual intercourse with him, but I didn't want. I felt pressured. Because um, if I did not have sex with him, he would probably judge me. Or he had sex with me and I didn't really want, but he, I kept saying no, I'm, I'm not ready now. But he kept undressing me. All those things where a man thinks when a woman is saying no, mm. she mm. actually means yes. yes. And, and that's, where, that, that's now what makes a, a man a suspect. Mm. That's that. That's what victimized the woman, uh, because if it's no, it's a no. It's a no. Uh, I mean, we have women today who say, "Look, if if I I, I get in bed with my man and he doesn't undress me, I'll think that is not rom- romantic. Romantic, enough. yeah. And I I think I'll think that is boring. But if you get in in bed with a man who's got who knows concern, who understands what concern is, he's not going to undress you, because he knows that by undressing you. Without you consenting to it, mm-hmm. he's, he's committing a felony. He's committing a crime. So you need to consent to it. You need to tell him that you are allowed to take off my, my T-shirt. You are allowed to remove my jean from me. And it's the same thing as men. It's the same thing. If the woman is coming on to you and you are uncomfortable, you are not ready that night, you, 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 you are allowed to say, look, I'm okay. not ready. What are the total social impacts on on the boy child when the boy child is neglected um where we 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 go thinking that the boy child is okay mm-hmm. uh, we likely to see outbursts are we likely to see the boy child um, breaking down um what what is it if we allow the boy child to go un, un, unattended to Look, if, if we allow the boy child to go unattended to, uh, one of the things that we are going to uh, get in society, we are going to have a, a lot of uh, men becoming suspects of things that they are not aware of. We are going to have a lot of men uh, committing a lot of, commit, um, a lot of crime, I mean, that they are not consciously aware of. We are never going to deal and bring the issue of of sexual violence, sexual abuse, of uh, intimate partner violence, of gender-based violence. We are never going to deal with those because we will always have the men as a perpetrator. Mm-hmm. A- and, and, and unfortunately, that, that, that's what's going to be the, the norm that we are going to live with because mm-hmm. uh, are we going to say that um, the men um, are going to burst out and, and, and probably become more aggressive? Yes, that could happen because it's just a matter of time when men actually start feeling that there's too much empowerment that's been given to women and, and, and we are not getting anything. 
and and this will cause a lot of um, uh, aggressiveness, a, lo a lot of violence in the communities, and we are going to have a problem on that as well. So, um, what are the plans for Afrian towards this issue? Well, um, it's a good thing that 20, 2020 uh, is a year actually that most of the development partners, including government itself, has uh, is taking a step to now advocate and to look into the matter of the boy child. Mm. Um, so they are, uh, at the moment as we speak, there's a lot of um, programs that are being put together. There's a lot of funding that's uh, being put aside that's going to target the, 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 the education around men and boys. Uh, I know there's, there's a new um, 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 training manual now that has been put together by the Ministry of Gender and the Ministry of uh, Education and, he and Ministry of Health that will target um, conferences that will be put aside for men and boys to be educated, for them to be. And the same issues of concern, especially the issue of concern, I think that's going to be one of the main topics. And the issues of gender roles, what is the role of a man in the community? Um, uh, what is a man supposed to do and not supposed to do? What does the man have the right to say no to and, 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 and yes to? Like earlier we mentioned about that. A lot of men are also becoming victims in the community because there are societies or, or, or communities or cultural beliefs whereby if a young man has been approached by a, an older woman and the young man does not man up to go sleep with that older woman, he's not seen as a man fit enough to be a man. Mm. That's happening. And not so, even so, so, so you're saying that <clears throat> at times young men feel pressured just simply be peer pressured, sort of, yes. because of the fact that he he would then be castigated as as as, as being a coward. Just young men are even being raped today without no, them knowing that they are being raped. Because if, if as a young man, an older woman approach me, and um, she wants to get into a, a sexual relationship with me. And obviously, because of the benefits that are there, she's an older woman. She probably has got a better, a nicer car than mine, and I'll be driving that car. Those are the benefits normally young men get from older women. And during our sexual activities, she is making me do things, and I have to do those things just because I, I don't want to back out because I feel I'm a man. I cannot back out, and and and. If I go understand later on that whatever she was making me to do is probably raping me because she's I'm doing these things that I'm uncomfortable with because the moment you are doing something that you're uncomfortable with it's wrong already. You need to be comfortable. You need to be at peace with it. And also the fact that I'm doing it and I know I'm underage. Then also it's wrong already as well. And because of what society has taught us as men. That as a man, you do your role as a man. You do not back away from from things like this. If you approach, mm. you must you must take your stand as a man, and you must deal with the situation. Mm. A lot of men uh, they they either fall victim or they become perpetrators because of these issues, because of the gender roles that are are, are being put in, in society into society. Yeah. Okay, um, I think it's an interesting thing, um, that consent thing. I'm just uh, sitting here smiling and asking myself, wow, that's yeah. the thin line? That's the thin line. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and, I'm, and I'm just asking myself, how many men are aware of that thin line? How many men are aware of that thin line? Um, it, it's quite interesting. And I, I think... The, the most interesting part about it is the fact that you're speaking about teaching the young men to be able to understand, okay, so how do I treat a woman? How do I respect a woman? Um, and, 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 and it helps him to be able to know, you know, how to deal with a, how to deal with a woman. But also, how do I deal with my children? Uh, how do I deal with my kids? Uh, there, there's so many issues that people come out there are many other issues yeah. but also how do i deal with other men um if someone comes at me and insults me is my only reaction towards that just violence yeah is, is am i just going to act and respond to everything with in a violent nature or can i deal with it differently you, you know um um this is actually the the issues that we are looking at now especially in 
in in the in the countries the less developed countries um we have a lot of men that are actually struggling and this is where we're actually saying also we must bring this conversation and we must hold this conversation from the grassroots which is from home we must start parents must start talking to their children about these issues parents must but also parents cannot talk to the children if the parents are not educated mm. so and this is why i mentioned earlier that we are going to be talk, uh, we, we will be rolling out training on that are t targeting uh, uh, boys and men because men have to be educated for for a father to be able to sit down with his son and say if you do abc to a woman it's wrong the father has to accept has to understand and actually has to believe that yes it is wrong this is my cultural belief this is what the law is saying today and the world is becoming a a, a global village with all these laws now we are all being conformed into one little bubble that we have to obey whatever is inside there so we in there some in some we have to some areas we have to put away our cultural beliefs that make we believe make us men and we have to start talking about these things and this is a conversation that has to start it's not something that's going to be done in one day to say that no there's a training that has been done and men understand and this is what you're going to do it's going to take probably another 25 years like we have been doing with the adolescent girl so it's probably going to take another 25 years to teach the young men again and it's something that we have to start investing in it has to begin at some point but it's a conversation that we are supposed to start having with our friends it's a conversation that you and i josie as friends we are supposed to start having mm -hmm. to say that if you do this to your lady it that's wrong it's not right for you to handle your lady like this it, it it's really wrong we are supposed to have this conversation as friends we are supposed to have this conversation in the schools this is the only way we can teach the young men if we do not make this a conversation and i as a, a friend to you i'm afraid to tell you that these behaviors or this the way you have been treating your your ladies i have known you for five years the way you have been treating her it's not right mm -hmm. i want you to understand that it's not right because it could get you in trouble we need to start having this conversation because the, they say word of mouth is the best marketing so once we start having this conversation, that's the, the best way that we can actually start developing the new behavior because this has to come with behavior change. Psychologically, the, we have to change. We have to change the way we look at things as men. And it's not going to be easy because some men are going to be are going to feel like their manhood is being taken away because you have to consent to everything. In developed countries, for example, the United States, when people get in a relationship, they make it clear and through talking, you need to talk. If you if you are getting in a relationship with a lady, you need to tell her, listen, this is a relationship and it's going to be a sexual relationship. Mm. Do you agree to this or you don't agree to this? I know it sounds awkward. It sounds weird to tell someone that you have met because it, it doesn't sound cool anymore that you have to ask for consent. But to protect yourself, you need to have this conversation. You need to let the lady know that no... I am interested in you sexually and I want to have a sexual relationship with you. And if we go to my place, is it okay that we engage in a sexual activity or are you not ready? These are things that you need to talk about mm -hmm. with your partner. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And I think uh, what we will do is we will continue to have this series of conversations around some of these things and, and, and especially the boy child. We will try and uh, also, um, um, as we have done with uh, the, the, the girl child, we've got Women First every Sunday that, uh, with Prisca. Uh, women First is, is going to be there. We're going to be dealing with women issues. And I think we just needed to look at how we deal with each other. And they say, um, 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 teach a man, uh, what, uh, give a man fish and uh, he will eat for a day. Teach a man how to fish, and he will eat forever. Yeah. And I think that's ideally what we are trying to do here, is trying to create and have the conversations that are difficult enough. Uh, Clavet, thank you so much. And uh, we were speaking to Clavet Mwandingi of uh, AFRIAN, the president of AFRIAN. Uh, thank you so much uh, for tuning in tonight. This has been Lockdown Nights with Jesse Joss. Keep the faith and... Good night. Lockdown night with Josie Josh. Josh.
Ah, tante, 